I'm Ken Jr. and welcome to Train World TV. Here you'll find the latest and greatest in model trains. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new to our channel, we're glad you're here and I invite you to click the subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you'll never miss a video. Now, we'd also love to send you exclusive deals and special announcements that you won't find anywhere else. So be sure to sign up for our emails, TW text, and stay connected with us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. Now, you can find all the links in the description box below or trainworld.com. And without further ado, enjoy today's video. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to Train World TV. And uh, tonight we have a very special episode, an episode specially featured on Broadway Limited. And we also have two great guest co-hosts uh, with us tonight, today as well. So uh, we have a great lineup. And uh, let me just go around the horn and kind of uh, introduce every everyone quickly. And you could uh, say a, a brief uh, paragraph, or if, if you can, you could go in and uh, do an autobiography on yourself. And uh, to, to the, I guess, other side of me is Ken Silvestri from Broadway Limited. How you doing, Ken? I'm doing good. Thank you for having us. And I've always looked forward to these. These are fun. That's awesome. And and who are you for the people who are seeing you for the first time? Ken Silvestri, uh, VP of Sales and Marketing. A Broadway Limited. <laughs> Very good. And uh, right underneath you, we got James, JLWII2000 on YouTube. How you doing, James? Good. How are you, Ken? All right. Doing good. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm just some guy that barely knows anything about trains on YouTube. That's my introduction. <laughs> there you go. You'll find out more later why. <laughs> All right. And also, Tony, how you doing, Tony? I'm doing good, Ken. How are you doing this week? All right. You're a man I, who, who needs I can't no believe, introductions. <laughs> I can't believe we're at the end of October. I know. You know? Isn't that by. just amazing? This is We're just rolling right along here. But yeah, we got some neat stuff today. Broadway-like. Everybody, it seems like we have such a flood of product lately. Boy, hasn't it been? Yes. Broadway has been <clears throat> shipping a ton of product, uh, lots of new product. I, I can't even keep up. Um, the biggest one recently, the E6 Atlantics uh, 442s, amazing home run. Uh, we also had the, the Blue Goose. Um, the SD45s just arrived. Um, some rolling stock just arrived. I, I, I mean, Broadway is on a roll. And uh, what, who better to, to join us on tonight than Ken Silvestri to kind of tell us all about it? You know, this time of year is the start of train season. And you know how it goes every year. It's like, boy, it, it's Halloween already, to Tony's point. Oh, oh, it's Thanksgiving. Oh, it's Christmas. Well, we have time now to get our railroads ready to, to show everybody for the holidays. And um, we have some product that'll, that'll help you do that. That's awesome. So I, I know you have this whole agenda lined up tonight. So I'm not sure if uh, you want to kick things off and uh, give it a whirl or how you want this to work, Ken. Well, let's start with the... Paragon 4, there it is, E6 Atlantic. And wow. the Atlantic is, is just one of my favorite locomotives. 
and, and one of the reasons is is that it 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 looks at home on any size layout. It's a scale locomotive. You know, a, a lot of smaller layouts they, they try to run the big locomotives. They look a little bit out of place, but this looks good everywhere. And it's a die cast shell. It's Broadway quality. Beautiful. If you can see this, the spoked wheels that are painted in it. Oh, I love those drivers. Oh. And yeah, that that four four two really shows them off, doesn't it? Yeah. And you know, this is where the, the train guys look at that and they see beauty and art into it. <laughs> where some people look at it and go, oh, "It's a train." You know? <laughs> but th this is brand new tooling. This hasn't been done before, correct? Correct. Correct. <laughs> And and so, usually when that's the case, everybody goes crazy. Correct, James? Yeah, that, any new product is almost always a hit. Uh, and the one thing I got to play around with this locomotive on the layout and during the filming of the review is, it seems like Tony can correct me if I'm wrong. In my history as a modeler, the smaller the locomotive you get, it seems like you're more prone to have like not very smooth. Uh, speed steps it seems to kind of be jerky this thing just glides over the rails and that they they put smoke in this small uh, steam locomotive and it just it's eye-catching i'm not a pensy fan no offense to broadway Limited. Um, <laughs> i'm a up guy and, a, and an ns guy but i'm like wow this thing's beautiful this is definitely a, something that's i'm gonna run just for fun but it just glides on the rails it's Elegant, if that's a, a good way to put it, uh, when you're running it on your layout. So, just a, a beautiful locomotive. You know, and it is it is small. That little E6 class, those were built at uh, uh, Pensy's Juniata shops. It's only a 41 foot locomotive, 72 feet with the tender. But with those big drivers on it, that Atlantic type, it, as Ken says, it's a great model railroad locomotive because it looks big but it's fairly small you know compact in the way it's put together uh but and it dates back to 1910 to 1914 is when these were built and they built a little more than 80 of these for the pensy built their own and they worked through world war ii uh into almost about 1950 that some were on lease to the long island so and then in the group can you've got some regular pensy ones but isn't there one the what 460 is a special decoration or special unit of the bunch yes oh oh which ken are you talking to oh okay. <laughs> uh ken at, ken at broadway well ken jr yeah. i guess we need yeah we're got we got extra kins here but yeah ken you guys did the Lindbergh special as part of the run correct yes and uh it's such a great backstory that that uh um it, it just adds to this locomotive and if you have it, could you tell it? I do. I've got some pictures here. If we can, I yeah, there we go. Uh, the the Lindbergh special, and this is such a neat story. This is 1927, and Charles Lindbergh, <laughs> there he is with his Spirit of St. Louis plane, flew Paris to New York. It was a, his first solo transatlantic flight. And as he came back, he was in Washington, D.C., getting the Distinguished Flying Cross Medal from the president who was Calvin Coolidge at the time. Well, they wanted the newsreel footage for the Broadway theaters in New York and the event was in Washington DC and such. So they needed to get that film. And you may think about all this now. I mean, look at what we're doing here with Ken jr. Live around the globe, you know, via the internet, but oh. 1927, they shot the film of the president giving him the medal. They wanted it then, you know, to show in the theaters that most of the newsreel companies went with airplanes. Oh, we'll charter a plane. And they flew the film to New York. But the Pensy plan was that we're going to race it with this E6 Atlantic to New York and put a car on the train that's going to develop the film. So in effect, you don't have that lag time. The planes landed in New York. Somebody still had to go to a lab, develop the film, and get it to theaters. But Pensy, boom, had it done on board. And so they, that is the Lindbergh special thing. And it set a record. It was just like a little three car train, the baggage car that was equipped as a dark room, a P70 coach, which I think you guys make a P70 coach as well. Don't you Ken? Yeah. So you can almost put this little train together. And I mean, this is, you know, racing along. It could scoop the water as it goes, all that kind of stuff. So no stops basically. 
and brought the film in developed and ready to go. And there's the shot we have with the train arriving. There's the 460 in the background with the crew that set the record. And that mm. locomotive is was preserved. And it's on, and is it in Pennsylvania? I'm trying to remember now. It, this is a shot that I sourced from the web. I think this is at a museum is where this is housed now. So it did get preserved, thankfully. And this locomotive is on display, but there is the 460 today as it looks sitting in the museum. <laughs> it is. So I really like that. Again, you know, steam built upon itself. And when we get to one of the other steam locomotives we're going to talk about tonight, you know, you see how they kind of built on the wheel arrangements where they just kept getting bigger and bigger. But this one, I think with that big boiler and the two big drivers is such a neat looking, you know, I've always thought this was an eye catching piece. I remember Mantua doing it decades ago. And it's one that always sticks in my memory. So when you guys announced it, it's like, oh, this is going to be a beauty. And, and, Thank you. and Tony, do you know about how uh, how many miles per hour it ran? Uh, Randy I think it's maybe 125. I, th I think that they 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 want I, the stuff I've seen on it is that it averaged was like 74 or something, but okay. that it did get up to 115 was the reported maximum speed, but there's no evidence of it. But yeah, the average speed by the time the train got into Manhattan, it was 74 miles an hour is what it managed in making that record setting run. So, wow, that's yeah. unbelievable. And Tony, where, where do you get all this history from? Because they don't teach you that in the books. <laughs> <laughs> they don't? Oh, you know, uh, eight, years, eight years of Catholic grade school. The nuns right. taught me all this stuff. <laughs> they they <laughs> must have that. loved trains back in the day. <laughs> Very neat. That, that's amazing. Really cool. And that, that's, that's neat to hear about the train. And quite honestly, the sales on this engine for the, the, um, the the special the 460 it was like everybody wanted that specific road number it was crazy it was just uh, outstanding well and you know these and ken tell us about you can see this picture see the red marker lights and the the number board on the side of the that's if you've not gotten one of these paragon 4 dcc steam locomotives this would be a great one to get because I love all of the lighting features. I mean, it's got smoke, it's got sound, of course, but I'm amazed at all. The One of the things with Paragon 4 is you've put in the individual controllable lights and such, but I'll let, I'll let Ken get on the soapbox and talk that up. But as I saw this picture, I thought of that immediately. It's like, oh, you put these Paragon 4s on the tracks and they're beautiful with all the, the little lighting and things they've got. It's just wonderful. Yeah, and per, per lighting mode and the yes. you have a capacitor now on the Paragon 4. So, you know, any track issues you have or going through switches, you don't have to really worry about it. And I'm like, Tony, when you dim the lights with the, with the, the, the locomotive lit like that, it just looks cool. It's just, I think, what my railroaders love to do. Um, we, we made that locomotive, that, that real shiny one. And James, do you have a picture of those? Yep. Let me. I had it at the show in um, we're everywhere this summer, and uh, you go, why did you make it so shiny? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's that one at the uh, at, at the um, I think it's a, the Pennsylvania National Museum. You guys yes. seeing that okay? All right. Yes. Can you okay. can you uh, enlarge it though, or, or no? It's gonna kind of. Ah, okay. Same. Very neat. And yeah, see the lighting on these, the, like the back of the tender there. I th I can't remember which was the first of those pair. We got something early when you first were introducing the Paragon Four, and I was just amazed at playing with it. It was like a Chicago Northwestern something four six zero, or now I can't remember what it was. But I was just blown away with all the little like lantern lights and everything working, and wow, it's yeah, a lot cab, of a lot of fun. Cab curtains on there. Mm -hmm. uh, curtains are cool. Yeah, it's just a. I think it's a, you know one of those locomotives that if you're not into trains, it'll get you into trains because it's just yeah. eye catching and like I said, it just runs so well. Uh, and it's you know from what I understand with the models, it gets really difficult as the the smaller space you're hitting to fit the electronics in there to where it does operate smoothly, but they nailed it. 
Yeah. yeah. And yeah my background is in electronics, and um, to see what we get into the locomotives now is just incredible. Yeah. It's just incredible. And also, this is a great engine because it could fit on pretty much all the uh, the layouts that there are. You know, a lot of time these steam engines they require 22, 24, uh, you know, or greater radius. But th this is a, a nice small, uh, you know, uh, steam locomotive, and I, I believe it's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Ken, it should be 18. Yes, yeah, I think it can turn on 18 curves. Yeah. You can see all the different versions they have too. There's a uh, ten different road name or road numbers, and then you've got the Train World exclusive, the SP, which I might be sold out at this point, but uh, it's pretty yeah. neat. Yeah, we we actually still have a couple left, but you know it, it's funny. Uh, everybody's saying, "Oh, what is the Southern Pacific doing on a 442?" <laughs> and you get all those people who who <laughs> are very upset about it. But the orders have been phenomenal, <laughs> and e everybody loves the color and something different. And it, it truly is a great steam engine. No matter what paint scheme you put on it, it's going to sell. And um, actually, a, a manufacturer did this in O scale, and it was just like crazy. Every, everybody went nuts. And, um, you know, even though it's not prototypical, everybody loves the that it's a small steam engine and you could really put it on any layout and adding color or even though it's not prototypical is is not a problem because they they, they want a great engine which is this engine itself it's a great steam locomotive and and it's it's small small enough where it could you don't have to worry about those large turnouts or the switches so um it's just really neat yeah and the post-war version has a a lot of subtle differences but one main spotting feature is pennsylvania on the side of the tenders like a lot larger in print but i'm sure tony could go more into that <laughs> oh it's uh yeah i hadn't i have not looked through them i we're getting the i forget which uh we're doing in model railroad news that i've seen it but i don't remember which one but yeah the there's different early late which broadway does a lot on the steam locomotives which is nice if you're into or want one of those always look at them they're not one size does not fit all with just different road numbers so do you want it early late and different things done to it and like the i think the blue goose had some of those changes as well and, oh it, i know we're not really talking about that one tonight ken yeah <laughs> but oh my gosh that santa fe blue goose that 3460 gorgeous okay. absolutely i mean that is a, a work of art piece i mean wow yeah it, it, it's true it, it's some of these locomotives approach art to me they really do yeah and, really and it's funny i just want to address one comment i see a comment about price but I, I just want to say Broadway Limited has the best HO steam on the market. They, their quality and the details are unbelievable. And the smoke features are ridiculous. It, it's just a smooth operational piece. And you could ask modelers out there that, you know, Broadway, hands down, I, I think is most popular for the HO steam. And if you compare the detail difference, what you get for the price is a big difference. So yes, there may be uh, you could get a, a cheap steam locomotive or whatever, but the detail will will not be the same. Um, and you know, HO just in general is becoming uh, you know it, it's driving up the price. But th there are different manufacturers or different brands, so it depends on the the detail level. This engine is it was done meticulously and just a beautiful fine piece of art like ken said so um i i think it's a, uh, actually a, a very well priced for what you get for that engine and can i make I, a couple points about price too a lot of <laughs> models, a lot of modelers that are newer in the hobby they gravitate towards the msrp which is not always the price you pay you know um so there's sometimes discounts out there uh, through retailers such as yourself ken and then the other point is the amount of investment that goes into uh the hobby broadway cranking out all this stuff and it's easy to kind of overlook but all of that requires a lot of tooling costs and money to invest into the hobby 
And I've gotten a little, gotten to know a little more about that as I get to see the manufacturing side of things on occasion. Um, so it's not cheap to just, you know, it's not like one size fits all. Every different model out there requires all this tooling. And I know Train World done a series on it and a couple other, uh, or posted a series on all the manufacturing stuff, but it gets really pricey. And Broadway, uh, I can say definitively, is the most budget friendly pricing for steam locomotives for what you get out there. Uh, and I've, I've reviewed all, all the different companies. You're not going to get the bang for your buck. You're going to get anywhere else other than Broadway. So, you know, our, our trains aren't cheap, but they're a good value. Um, you know, we, we would love to, you know, it's like, Oh, can you make them cheaper? <sighs> You know, I've talked to like Bachman about making starter sets, and we've looked at starter sets. We can't do it. We just cannot do it. Um, but the trains we make are uh, expensive, but they're beautiful. I mean, they're well. That you know, that Blue Goose, I think, is a brass hybrid, right, yeah. Ken? Yeah. And when yeah. you stop and think about that, the boiler, the tender, basically everything but the drive mechanism is the same as would have been a brass, a handcrafted brass import. But you're getting that wonderful mechanism that generally can outperform most brass. So you're getting the best of both. And when you look at the, I think, off the top of my head, what is that Blue Goose? About $700? Uh, Lists eight, for, for $899. But again, if that was a real brass import painted and everything else, I wouldn't expect it to be below about twenty five hundred dollars to three grand at least minimum. And it runs and it, and it, runs. And it runs. Yours runs. It's got DCC. It's got smoke. It's got all this lighting. I mean, so again, when you talk about value, I was I either it was a show we did with Bob Gruba some time back, or I think in an email with him where I said that brass hybrid line. When you stop and think about what it is and what you're getting, is probably the most incredibly priced model series on the market because you're basically getting this Cadillac, but it's priced like it's a regular die cast or whatever model more or less that you no, know, they're, they're so much fun and wonderful to collect. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Ken, I didn't even notice you, you, you cut out the blue goose on, on your spreadsheet, <laughs> but the, the blue goose actually came in like uh what was it? Um, a month around a month ago it's been and, almost a month yeah i mean this is ground bait breaking for the ho industry and it truly is beautiful i i mean ken you guys did a great job with this the, the drivers on it are beautiful um the colors is unique it's and it was the only streamlined santa fe steam locomotive and you, I think you guys knocked out what, like three different versions that skirting changes, the color changes, either that silver stripe or something. There's at least three variations on the, the goose in what you did as well. So that too is kind of amazing when you think of, yeah, they're 1950 appearance, 1941 appearance. Yeah, there we go. See how the skirting up front there by the valve gear is different. And that's got the lifter up there on the smokestack. I think that's the later edition. So again, it's like, here's this odd kind of one of a kind, and they knock out three different versions of it. It's like, wow. And then Train World did a Cincinnatian uh, kind of, uh, not exact uh, prototypical, but that thing sold like hotcakes too, didn't it, Ken? Yeah, we, we actually don't have many left, but um, this was like, <laughs> it was pretty much sold out when it got here um it, it's really a gorgeous engine and yes the wheel configuration may not be correct but uh, I, again a, a lot of these engines if you have to recreate new tooling for one specific locomotive it, it just may not never happen in, in entirety so uh you know people love the fact that they're they're able to get paint schemes that they've they've never seen done before and yeah we we do take a chance that it's not prototypical but you know what? People love it. And again, Broadway did a great job. It came out stunning, just really beautiful. And um, I, I, I just can't say, uh, you know, enough about the, the quality, about how beautiful they come out. Let me say this about the um, locomotives, the fantasy schemes. And, you know, a lot of guys don't like them, but they help us make reach our minimums. So... 
Um, you don't, if you don't like it, don't get it. But it, no. it helps us make the locomotives that you want also. Yeah, and, and, and I've said that in emails back to people that will email me and say, why do these manufacturers do this or that? And I'm like, well, I hate to tell you, but I'm helping subsidize you getting the prototypical ones because I'm <laughs> one of those people lining up to buy these fantasy roads. So thanks to me, you know, the, and people okay. like me, we're buying these that, again, are, are helping make. Well, otherwise, it's a one of a kind that we can only make at Santa Fe Blue Goose once and one and done but yep. so this opens the doors up to do a lot of different things and, and as you say it helps that economy helps yeah and and for this engine you usually you know our brooklyn store has some our long island store has some we already had to give our quantity from the long island store to brooklyn because they already sold out there so i i mean it, it's just it, it's selling regardless but um it, broadway just does a great job and it, it's uh just the whole blue goose project was just unbelievable they really did a nice uh, job on that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. How about switching to diesel? <laughs> Sounds good. And we have the Paragon 4 SD45. And what's what's unique about these this group of locomotives that we came out was the cab specific detail and what what that really means is that the santa fe it's the same locomotive but was equipped differently than, than other railroads and we tried to capture that for each each paint scheme that we did look at the the top can you see the yeah that's kind of the later era. It's got like the stratolite beacons on the side of the cab and the air conditioner behind the horns are mounted up front. Then you've got the antenna that they raised up, the little skate type antennas put up on a plate for better reception. And that in general, those were old enough that they came in bookends paint, uh, but that's a repaint in yellow bonnet. So that's kind of the oh, late 70s, 80s Santa Fe accurate detail and everything. I mean, the, and is this, I'm trying to remember, I think the Jeep 20s, I'm trying to think what was the first of your diesels that really went with the road accurate look. And it might've been the 20s of recent and vintage. Well, I, I kind of think of it, it's almost like taking some of the brass characteristics and bringing it into, into you know, plastic diesels. Exactly. Yeah. And this, it's nice to see this happening with this new group. I mean, this new run of locomotives, we've had a Jeep 20, you've announced a Jeep 30, this SD 45 is landing. Now you've announced an SD 40. Uh, so basically hitting all these classic, these are all the electromotive division, like second generation four and six axle units that EMD did in the 1960s into the seventies. And man, this is a classic with the flared radiators 3,600 horsepower, 20 cylinder. I mean, this was this was EMD six axle mover for like priority freights, and it's it's a beautiful prototype, and this is a very well executed with all the different details this round. I've got some prototype pictures to go with uh, the different road names, and I think you've hit about all the big popular ones. SP had the largest fleet. There's about 1,200 of these built from 1966 to 71. And then it was succeeded with the Dash 2 line that EMD introduced at that time. So there is an SD45-2 is probably the only reason they quit making it is that they, they moved on to another. But like this Southern Pacific, this is from a, a rail fan photographer friend of mine, James Belmont. And you guys have done the SP with that red light in the nose. You know, this setup is there. The brake wheel in the back is, I think, typical on all of them. I like how someone spray painted Ace on the tank. I'd love to know the story on that, but I forget what year this is. And then of all things, I think Looking Pensy had one of the second biggest fleets. They had about 130 of the 1,200 built, and uh, Broadway did Pensy. And this is really pretty much a generic or base. If you want to say what well, was kind of the base unit out of the bunch, because as we look, see the SP's got the nose light package and the snow plow and all that. Pensy is kind of, this was the typical... Uh, version of the SD45, and you guys are doing that one. This Union Pacific that you're doing is interesting because, yeah, this this odd table up here was not for the crews to have picnics, which would have been my first guess, but no, it's not. 
Those are the two can antennas, again, raised for better reception. And I think you're doing the later paint scheme, which would be the second unit with the larger Union Pacific and the shields. But this look with this antenna arrangement is later, and that's the SD45 you guys are doing. And I think you're doing the lower numbers as they kept getting more new power. The remaining SD45s kind of got moved down the roster to maybe like double digits in the teens or something. And that's the model uh, that Broadway's doing a bit. And James can show us those pictures in a second of the models on these. BN had SD45s like crazy, including the original The Great Northern Hustle Muscle was putting on the side of that Empire Builder painted Great Northern. BN also got uh, green C, B, and Q units that were in that early hockey stick Burlington scheme, and they inherited Northern Pacific, and then they legitimately bought a few of their own because they come in in March of 70, and they built SD45 through 71. So they were a big owner of SD45s. And boy, the, you guys were even doing the high hood, which I know you like. You did the high hoods in at least the old SD40-2 that you did, but I noticed you got high hoods here for the N and W, no fork and western, and here's the southern. And this so shows off the flare, running them long in forward. Weren't these things awesome looking with that bell up there and the flared radiator? But this is southern, what you guys are doing. You're also doing the black NW which would have been their early 1970s look with that interlocked white NW. Now, the thing I like here, Ken Jr., look over here. Guess which car I want to drive home. See underneath that Ramada Ensign? See that big red Riviera? Can you see me driving that red <laughs> Buick Riviera? Remember those with they they almost had no trunk because they had that big black? That, oh, <laughs> isn't that? I, as I was looking at these pictures, I'm like, man. You could when, talk me. You could talk me out of my Eldorado for this early '70s Riviera. I think that's a beauty. When you said Ken, look at that car. I was like, oh, he's talking about the other Ken because that was before <laughs> my time. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. And then there we go. This is the end of the look that they adopted in 1971 and ran up to almost the time in Norfolk Southern, and that's being done as well. I remember seeing these as a kid. I never got to see 1776, which was the bicentennial. But my dad and I chased these across central Illinois quite a bit on hotshot trains from like Decatur to Springfield over to Hannibal. So I remember these very well. But awesome stuff. And let's we've seen the real ones. Let's look at the models. James, if you've got that up and kind of see the the spread of different types that have been done, because virtually every one of them's different, aren't they, Ken? Pretty much. Yeah. 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 yeah, Tony, I'm not fancy like you. I only have one screen, so I had no idea that you were presenting. Oh, I was like showing stuff I didn't know wasn't there. But can you guys see uh, the website yeah. okay now? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. I guess James, as as a modeler, what do you um, expect to see, or are, are you happy to see these like uh, cab specific details that Broadway Limited is now kind of really going after? Yeah, it's always good uh, to not see. Uh, a cookie cutter approach to a model because there's so many different variations that can be applied to so many different uh, locomotives over the course of time. And uh, it just kind of shows that the, the, the company producing these things uh, takes the time. And, and again, uh, uh, there's a monetary uh, cost involved to do this type of uh, cab specific detail. So it kind of, to me, as a modeler, it sends a, sends a signal the company cares, and then I can get as detailed as I want to without having a cookie cutter approach to the model. So it's always uh, very uh, refreshing to see. Thank you. You know who's not crazy about uh, the cab specific detail is the factory. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure, yeah. I don't think much of that. <laughs> I mean, when you think when you think of the work on these, yeah, basically it's your every every road name is essentially putting together a different model for them. So it, the workmanship, there's a lot more to it. You're not just making a thousand of the same shell and just painting them different different roads. Yeah, it's a. I mean, to have all of these available to modelers and all these different variations in road names and, and, and numbers is just uh it's just the golden era of model railroading as i call it definitely so 
Here's some of Tony's work done for people. You can see the firecracker antenna and the five time horn and a bunch of stuff I pretend to know that Tony actually knows. Yeah. I like the trucks being done different too. You know, you look at the trucks and you think, oh, flexicoil, but different railroads bought different things like this Norfolk and Western correctly has the brake cylinder over each axle. But I think as we look back at the UP or one of the others, it had the low mounted brake cylinders, which has kind of that bar across the bottom part of the truck side frame. And those round cylinders are down there. And I think they ran into problems of those getting hit and nicked as they would run. So the upper brake cylinders became more popular. But again, like the N and W with three, one on each axle is different from some roads that had two. And I think in this run, you guys have tooled up can multiple side frames. Mm -hmm. Like I think that one said it's a flexicoil high mount and then you got the low mount brakes. So it's always fun to spot that. And it gives me more that I got to buy from Ken Jr. And, you know, he loves, I think Ken Jr. likes it especially because he goes, well, Tony's going to have to have one of each now. T Tony is our, our guide to the pre-orders. If, if Tony <laughs> orders it, then we know to stock heavy. <laughs> if, if James order it and Tony orders it, then we triple it. <laughs> That's why Ken wanted uh, both on tonight. So they, they purchased everything and I, I, Triple and quadruple order the amounts. <laughs> and you have these in stock, correct? Yes, we just got them. And uh, they, I tell you, they, they're stunning. Beautiful engines. Click open that. Now, the demonstrator looks like it's just got an illustration, but hit that one, James, and go to like its second picture. This is so pretty because of this metallic finish that General Motors did to it. Keep going. It does, I think, we get to a model. There, there's a couple of model picks here. And the fuel tank has this blue metallic and the mm -hmm. side frames are silver. That thing just pops. And this is correct on some of them did get the Southern Pacific light package, but this plane knows there, there were units like that, but Oh, I love that metallic blue, white and silver, especially with the fuel tank. Doesn't that thing just, yeah, that, that almost has a look of some of GM's cars at the time, even though I'm a Ford guy. That looks like a nice vet type car, yeah. Crazy. Really nice. Yeah, you can really see the paint on that uh, front end nose. Yeah. Cool. And all these have been all new tooling. I mean, Broadway had, I remember that big Alco you guys did early on. And I loved it. You did an SD40-2 and then with the C30-7. And then you've had some like cab units, E units, F units, that sort of thing. But boy, this this round of second generation EMDs, if you've not been following or looking at it, there's, as I said, going into that, what there's the Jeep 20, Jeep 30, SD40 just been announced, SD45 just arrived. It seems like there's something more. I can't say too much or I'll stumble into something that, I'm probably helping somebody with with pictures that isn't public yet. So I'll say no more. But you guys have been on a, a kick here on the second generation EMDs. They're all classic locomotives. Thank now you. here, uh, is it true, Ken, that you guys bought about four or five Amazon warehouses to, to uh, <laughs> store all your tooling? Yeah, Bezos is tough, but we got them. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, cool. All right. And, you know, this is all great HO stuff, but we also have some end scalers here. Yes. Ken, yes. So what do you got for end scale? Well, I have two pieces of rolling stock. But before they start bringing out the pitchforks. <laughs> <laughs> we love the end scalers, too. And uh, here's our hopper. Very cool. It's ARA 70 ton, four bay. Very neat. Nice detail. The coal load comes out. It's nicely appointed inside also. That's a very feel. nicely done. Yeah. It's very, it's just good quality and it's got, you know, good weight to it. It'll track nicely. And next, you have the New York Central box car. And I love the New York Central paint schemes, and this probably is my favorite. This is the pacemaker. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Nice roof. 
Beautiful car. And Ken, can we see the bottom? Those are body mounted couplers too, right? Yeah. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, nice detail in the underframe metal wheels. And I think what those come in packs, the prototype group is a four pack and then two packs of these, the close, the, you got a variety of road names that are close to the prototype. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a, and why, why is that? Why do these in scale guys get two? I see <laughs> this and I don't, I, I mean, Ken Jr. never sends me two of anything. And then I see the wind scale guys, they get two of everything. What's a, what's a secret word? What do I got to do? It's just that it's smaller and it's, it's kind of, I don't know. <laughs> They, they like to double up these end scalers. <laughs> but it's it's a classic. When you think of today's all the aluminum hopper cars and things that go by, this was the that ARA was a, a, a trade group of railroads that designed. Yeah, that's I'm showing one there. That offset side steel hopper, seventy ton capacity, uh, was the unit coal train of like the early to mid twentieth century. And there's a four bay version. Is yours four the three bay? Which is it, Ken? It's I think four. it's four. Yeah. yeah. Four. Yeah, four. yours is the four bay. Uh and the, you know, again, it's loading the top as you'd expect. The bay doors at the bottom opened up, and there's some differences here. Like this has got the the raised ends on it and such. But these cars lasted for absolutely ever. There's a three bay version, uh, Toronto, Hamilton, and Buffalo, and you can tell it's had some miles on it. But boy, these cars again were as you see coal cars everywhere at one time if you're steam or early diesel they're classics and they're such well-made cars uh the norfolk or the norfolk the new york central car this and pensy's x29 this is is this the 486 i think is this car ken is that right it's new york central's 486 classification i think is what this car is or 386 I'm confused now, but the they're all steel design. This was one of the first steel box cars because you had wood box cars, and then they started putting steel ends on them and trying to get steel frames. But Pensy and New York Central, this was an innovative box car uh, for New York Central to do, and this is the prototype for the Broadway Limited model, and this is it. You can see how, how far they lasted. It has a build date. If you can just barely make it out over there on the above the right truck, it says built four of 23, but you can see that service date under the NYC says six of 55. So still, still around then, but these were fantastic, you know, innovators for, they led to all the 40 foot sliding door steel box cars that we know. And it's a great model. And what you've done, in addition to these prototype New York centrals, you've done a couple of, New York Central paint schemes that it never wore, but are so neat looking. Like the green one you showed, you've done a pacemaker. I love this. Yeah. And Ken's Ken Jr. had this done for that Commodore Vanderbilt. I know he did it just to see if I'd buy one. And you you gotta love the pacemaker. Scheme. It is so cool. <laughs> it is so cool. I know he's got a bunch of pacemaker stuff coming, so I gotta check yeah. see if I did order it. But that, and then there's a whole group. If you're looking for these, these in scale boxcars come in pairs, and you've done like Boston and Maine, you know, Great Northern, Northern Pacific, just a lot. Of, and again, a lot of these roads all had. It's very representative of this look. Is that early? And as you can see, it's a little shorter. Like the boxcar, it's coupled to there is the more traditional later forty foot. But this is kind of that smaller uh, 40 foot early steel box car, which again, as you start looking between home built and various production things, there's a lot of cars like them out there. And and Ken, on the couplers, uh, uh, some people are asking, do you use your own couplers on the unscale uh, for rolling stock? Yes, they're um, uh, KD uh, compatible. Okay. Perfect. All right, Nate. And the the freight cars are really great. You got uh, box cars, uh, the the hoppers, and they're they actually just arrived a couple of days ago. So I, I think Ken wanted to ship everything before we did this um, live live <laughs> event. But um, tons of uh, N scale box cars and hoppers, and uh, on our site you're able to um, kind of filter it out if you're looking for the hoppers. Um, and they still have uh, a lot of different paint schemes. And uh, these are the H32s, and these were the uh, ARA's uh, 70 ton quad hoppers that we were talking about. So lots of good stuff for N scalers. 
and, and there's and, what there's that Christmas pair of box cars, and Ken, uh, the next page is in their Christmas hoppers too, uh, for people look. looking for that. I thought there was. Um, oh, unless you're sold, maybe well, well, what, maybe it's box it, cars. Box cars. Let's see. Yeah, yes. there's there there, yeah, and that's a neat collector Beautiful. thing to have. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. yeah. Get those holiday layouts. We're going. Get them cleaned up. That's it. And that's neat that Broadway Limited, you guys actually, you know, uh, a couple of products a year, you focus on the Christmas time and they always do very well. And um, it, this one is actually in perfect timing. You, you get it uh, right in like that November range and right before Christmas. So people are able to get it and, uh, you know, use it on their layouts before Christmas time. So that's perfect. That, that sounds like it should be easy. But it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. a, a Christmas cars in January is just it's not not, not the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All and, right. You know, one last thing is that we have the same level of detail and, and paying attention to, to the detail on on these cars as as a, as the locomotives. And the the end scale guys, there'll be some locomotives. Not right now. <laughs> the, timing, <laughs> the timing is such. Wow. All right. All right. What else you got, Ken? What else we got here? Ah, uh, this is another one of what I think is cool as can be. And I just I got, want everyone to know before Ken starts uh, rolling, um, he had a cup of coffee, so he's planning on being here all night. <laughs> <laughs> coffee really is yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and then that ken jr was making fun of you when he was get that cup of coffee and you know i can i can get a cup of coffee at eight o'clock at night and still go right to bed <laughs> i can drink it on the way to bed yeah oh you see those commercials oh no not a cup of coffee i'll be up on oh no 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 i can have a cup of coffee while i'm watching the tonight show and still go to bed yeah. that means bob and tony are overworked if, if they <laughs> could keep on rolling with a cup of coffee <laughs> All right, this one's just a beautiful locomotive too. It's a consolidation, Paragon Four, and it's. I tried to, to get locomotives that would pop, and this is another one that you look at. The colors are beautiful; they blend beautifully. Um, the decorations on the sand domes that you can see. Oh, that's pretty. Another diecast locomotive, this is Chicago and Alton. I don't recall many HO engines with that paint scheme. Um, I'm. Pretty dang sure it's 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 not a fantasy scheme. I'll have to check that. Can you check that? No, but but saying I I don't think anyone's really done that in HO before. That's a beautiful paint scheme, Ken. It really is. Yeah, and it, it pops over the over the streaming. You know, and it's that's a rare because Chicago and Alton's gone by 1947. It's merged into Gulf Mobile in Ohio. So Alton in general is hard to come up with. And you guys have done that beautiful EA. Diesel, the B and O, Alton had it, and then yeah, I saw this one coming out. I have your GM and O, the red Pacific four six two, and yeah, then here's this Alton one. But there's a number of real pretty. I think there's a Great Northern with a green boiler jacket in this run, and that Canadian Pacific with like the gray and the maroon. There's some really pretty steam locomotives in this set for that two eight zero. And this is the same chassis as the H ten. And I believe it was the H10. We we did a video where we pulled seven bricks with it. <laughs> we only had seven bricks. You know? I was like, okay, well, we'll just end it there. Um, so, you know, if, if pulling's a big part of a locomotive, whether you're you're a modeler or the real roads, and um, locomotives pull. Yeah, and Ken, I'm I'm looking at our back end system. Um, and we actually just got the today, so uh, we are processing orders. And um, I did see a comment, uh, I, I guess, from Sparky about the end scale uh, stuff. Is that shipping out? Um, it seems like they just came in either today or yesterday, but um, we're processing pre-orders, and uh, they are uh, getting out. So um, uh, they they are shipping, and uh, lot, tons of product from Broadway. <laughs> Uh, so, and for the consolidation, yeah, a lot of railroads had them, and for this locomotive, everything was 
you know, people say, well, th th this one's a little different. We consolidated all the consolidations to make one really good consolidation, and that's what we've made. So that's my, my stick on that. <laughs> It's a nice running piece, and the, the decoration and such. I think, like, I've got, uh, and I never know how to say it. It's what Lake Superior and Ishpeming is another odd one, and you've got that coming up. And I think this, the picture I've got here, is the prototype. And as you say, there are some differences, but it, it was kind of that general standard was put together for 280. And yeah, there's the LS and I there in Iron Ore Road. That's in this group. So, again, a little bit of the details different but it's kind of the same. And then here's an early, I think, seaboards in this group, and you can kind of pick out some of the color differences there too. So, the, you know, beautiful locomotives and some interesting road names that we don't see all the time, like the, like this LS and I. Please note all those people that say we only do Banksy. Please note. Yeah. <laughs> Please note. <laughs> That's neat. Nice stuff. You guys want to see some of the models on that real quick? Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, let's see those because they're like I say. There's a lot of them that are more than just your basic black with the name on the tender. Oop, lost it. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to step on Tony with my one screen setup here. I didn't know. <laughs> there's the Chicago and all. Neat. And these are Paragon Four with smoke. And all the lighting control and everything too, right, Ken? That's correct. Yeah. These run so nice. You know, that was always as a kid, no matter whose steam it was, it was all oh, steam's a little bit finicky. And that's the one thing I love about these. I don't think I've ever whether it's something small to like the big boy or the that what four 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 Pensy. I don't think I've ever put one of you guys' steam locomotives on the track. And had it misbehave. It's like, oh, look at that nice. Yeah, look at the southern all in green. I love that. There's that LS and I. Yeah, look at that green jacket on it. That's pretty. Yeah. Let's see. We'll take a look at that one for yeah. you, Tony. Lots of oh, different look color. at that. Sure. Yeah. Seven. Let's see. Was it one of these was an excursion uh, locomotive in the 80s, but I can't remember. Right. Yeah, I can't remember if it was a Pacific or a different, but yeah, this is that that flavor or look of Southern. Yeah. Well, those paint, a painted steam locomotive just so pops because it's right. not, you know, diesels are always painted basically, but I always find these, these are extra attractive. And it's just in time for Christmas too. Hmm. You got that, that nice green color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get those layouts ready. Come on. There you go. This is the real eye catching one for me. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And that picture I showed was 34. So as you see, that yeah, it's they're all based on, but they're you know, there's slight differences. But as you see, that was very close. And again, what an interesting this is an iron ore road. So yeah, imagine that with those little ore hoppers behind it would make a, a really neat train. Yeah, and the cab, uh, a lot of models steam locomotive models the cab vent is fixed uh the roof vent and and on a lot of broadway limited ones you can slide that to any position you want the engineer figures love that we'll just show western maryland boy that, that fireball scheme is pretty i always like that yeah Cool stuff. Got to take care of the people up in Ken's neck of the country. <laughs> <laughs> and this run is just landing now, right? Ken right. Jr., that these are, yeah. Yes, we, yeah. we just got these in okay. either today or uh, yesterday, but we, we're still processing some pre-orders. So uh, hopefully by tomorrow or Friday, they'll all be uh, reactivated. Um, with the pre-order process, we like to fulfill all our pre-orders because uh, they're guaranteed and uh, want to make sure that, you know, whoever pre-ordered them gets first come, first serve. And then we uh, start activating the items as um, we, we have uh, enough uh, to, to sell extra. But um, they're, they're all great paint schemes and they're going to sell out very quickly, Ken. And Tony, yeah, 13, and uh, 
13 years of pre-ordering through train world i've never been let down <laughs> that's it i've said it and forget it i know it's coming that's it. Don't 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 jinx it, James. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Dude, that's on you. <laughs> that's it. That's it. No, it, it, we we do take pride in it, and um, quite honestly, sometimes we we actually buy product from our competitors or you know other people when you know sometimes we get shorted shipments and everything, and we want to make sure our customers are happy. And I I don't care if I have to pay more money or the same price and you know, uh, lose money on the transaction as long as uh, that person gets that engine. So we always do our best. But, um, you know, there's, you know, obviously uh, so, some oddball occurrences that, uh, that that's why that happens. But um, we 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 definitely stock very heavy and we make sure we have enough uh, fluff to to, <laughs> to uh, account for those rare occurrences, whether it be uh, distributors or uh, manufacturers cottage. It's uh Sometimes it, it just happens. So, um, but pre-ordering is important for sure. And uh, a lot of these engines, like the the Blue Gooses, are running low, and they they're probably going to be sold out very quickly. Um, uh, so, and, and a lot of these uh, popular paint schemes on the 280s, I, I just know by looking at the paint schemes, they they're unique, different. They haven't been done often, and they they sell out very quickly. Well, let's get back to the train world thing. I've I've sold trains to Kenny's grandfather, his father, and now Kenny, <laughs> and it's always been been gracious and, and pleasure to do business with. I appreciate that, Ken, and uh, likewise with Broadway. We've been partners for a long time now, <laughs> and um, you know, uh, Broadway makes a great product, and. Um, uh, whether it be steam engines, diesel engines, HO, N scale, uh, they they really make a, a tremendous product, and and their service support staff is is really excellent. And you know, uh, you know, they, there are those rare occurrences that things happens with any industry or any company, and uh, Broadway really takes care of their customers. And um, you know, so if there is an issue, they they really do well and go always above and beyond to take care of the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Our service guys will appreciate that. All and, right. Uh, the grand finale, Ken. All right. Paragon <laughs> 4. Rolling Thunder added capacitance on board. The New York Central inverted bathtub. Vanderbilt <laughs> 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 <Bill> Hudson. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's here. It's alive. It's uh, alive. And, you know, we, we announced this a while ago. Pick it up back. again, Ken. Pick it up. Use those muscles. We want to see you. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And look at the, um, and, and this was actually quite a, a hard job for us wow. to get this. The siding um, along here where my finger is, is not perfectly smooth. And to, to imitate how it actually looked on the real railroad took us quite a few uh, attempts at it. And then we were just thrilled after we got this. You can kind of see it there. Yeah, you can see it reflecting the kind of the little like bulges or differences to the because that was just a shroud built over one of the Hudson or yeah, Hudson's locomotives. Yeah, yeah. And here it is. Wow. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, that sheet metal was. And then I have this other one too. Oh, I was starting to say that we we announced this a while back, and and it, it took a while for the orders to build. And once they they started, they just took off again. And but there was one guy in New York that kept bothering me. <laughs> where's the, where's the Commodore? Where's the Commodore? <laughs> Yeah, there you there go. It is, wow, wow, very neat. Wow, the awesome. train world is yeah. there. You go. And, and uh, do, do these come with the Keep Alive and the Paragon 4? Yes, very yes. cool. All very Paragon neat. 4, and, and what a, 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 a difference that makes in operating. You know, every layout has a bad spot, a, a switch that gives trouble, and the um, the added capacitance. Just bypasses that. Mm -hmm. Very good. Eliminates it. 
Somebody asked uh, at the beginning of the show in comments uh, if the pre-order deadline was passed. Uh, I don't know if Ken Jr. can chime in on that or if you guys, I'm sure you may have some uh, spares maybe if, if you don't yeah. sell it. Yeah, so so the pre-order deadline um, for for Broadway may have passed, but for, for us, we did stock a, a lot. Um, we do have some extra, but the, I tell you, this engine itself has a tremendous amount of pre-orders. And maybe it's because we're from New York. I That, that may <laughs> make sense. But um, I, I tell you, the demand on this has been unbelievable. So it's, it's really great to see that uh, New Yorkers and people all around the world, I mean, it's just a cool, unique, different locomotive. So um, it's, it's, it's really neat. So I, I think Ken and uh, the, the Broadway team really hit a, a home run on this one for sure. Thank you. Thank you. It's a cool locomotive. And I think it comes, I think it's December is when it's, it's doing, I don't have that up and I'm afraid if I would change it, I'd be yeah, gone. It, it was shown December uh, 22 arrival, maybe January. I said, this is December slash January. <laughs> And it, it is an absolute, I mean, it's a classic. Remember that show we did, was it about a year or so ago? Uh, Ken Jr., I think we had Bob Gruba on and our young buddy, Drew Warrington. Remember, his thing for Bob was, can you confirm or deny? Are you working on the Commodore van? I felt like Mike Wallace just came into the room from 60 Minutes and was going right. to get out. Oh, it's so good. But That's this right. is this was a one of a kind. This is a promotional thing for the 20th century. Let me get my computer going there we go and again it's it's the j1 hudson is what's underneath there and what they did was this shrouding it was done in 1934 at the very end of 34 debuts in february of 35 uh it was hitting at the time with like the burlington zephyr the union pacific m10000 so that streamlined look and a number of steam locomotives probably more than you think when you start looking virtually every railroad kind of worked with this idea and this, of course, the streamlining did increase its speed a little bit. I think it said two or three percent better at cutting through the wind. Uh, it does have the smoke lifter above the headlight there. So it did have some functional, you know, things, too, about it that it helped lift the smoke up in a way. And the panels that uh, Ken was talking about were for maintenance and things to get underneath and get in there. But and this is it with again a heavyweight 20th century. But what a classic and awesome train! And it did this was for some reason I get asked on this every once in a while. Well, what was that one? Rexall for like a convention had this one again. There's only one of these that got painted or got shrouded this way was done for a convention train that toured the country. So it got a lot of recognition at the time. <laughs> it stayed in this shrouded look until 19. Oh, about the late 30s, because what replaces it is the Dreyfus Hudson. And of course, there were more than one of those. But that's there's that goes back to that's August of 2013's Model Railroad News. But the Dreyfus Hudson series basically builds on this one of a kind unit. And you guys have done this. What with the two? I'm trying to see if I've got a good picture of it. I know the train world comes both. The changes done to it are the drivers. Isn't that right, Ken, that one is spoked and then one has just kind of the flat with the holes in it? This is the Correct. spoked. I believe they initially came out spoked. Yeah. And they soon changed these. I like those. I think. I mean, I love the spokes, but I like – that looks like a bowling ball or something. I don't know. I think those are kind of cool. And I think what the train world comes both uh, – they both come both ways, right? Spoked or y – Yes, we're doing it yeah. two, di two different yeah. ways because we couldn't decide which one would sell better. <laughs> <laughs> and, again, the train world is a fantasy and the pacemaker. You know, that came later, but, boy, it's it's a beauty. That's yeah. That's a wonderful – and again, another one of a kind. All that work and all that tooling was put together for its one road number and one four six four. Yeah, it's like Let me wow. Let something cool that we did. You see how the skirt follows all the way down. Um, now, if if you're running, you, it, there's not enough room for the the front truck to move. So that piece we call it a display piece. 
comes off. Huh. And if you want to display it with that on, it's in the box. If you're going to run it, it's probably going to have to be like this to make the curves. Yeah. Wow. You know, and no, that's you part of the things with the models is that um, they they also have to run on track that people have. So we we, we do things like that, but we think it it adds to its mystique. <laughs> <laughs> and and Tony, I I'm not sure if I could unveil this, but um, uh, I I I may just go for it, and uh, hopefully I'm not. Uh, Revealing the cat out of the bag as your dog is in the background. Oh, I see. But, yeah, he's gotten up from his nap. <laughs> but um, I and and yell at me if I if I should not do this. Uh, but I I actually subscribe to the HO Collector. Oh, thank you. And, and um, I I was flipping through it, and uh, I I actually stumbled upon something that's beautiful, and I I think Ken actually may be uh, very happy as well. And it is oh, a, yeah. <laughs> a, a nice article on uh, the the exclusive that we're doing, and also the obviously the Broadway Limited New York Central pacemaker. And uh, this is H O Collector, and Tony is the editor editor, I believe, right? Uh, co-editor. I've got a friend of mine in Kentucky that we both are big into H O history. In fact, okay. uh, Tony Lucio, my uh, co-editor, did that story on the early SD40-2 models. And yeah, there's so much stuff coming out now, yeah. like the exclusives that you guys do, that this future collectible section I added in the last year was a response to guys saying, well, I love knowing all the old stuff, but I'm afraid I'm missing some of this new stuff that's coming out. Right. And so I added that future collectibles thing to try to catch some of the, you know, just in case you didn't know this was being done kind of thing. Right. Yeah, and and it's really neat uh, looking at the history of trains and, you know, what was done and, uh, you know, the different uh, trains over the past. And it's amazing how trains have uh, evolved. And so I, I think this, uh, this engine is just going to be really fantastic and, uh, 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 you know, a part of history because no one's really done this to this level of detail, Ken, and um i don't know james are you excited yeah it's, those are just amazing locomotives and then to replicate the sheet metal and take the time to do that uh is really cool and again as a modeler that gets into stuff i shouldn't all the time <laughs> i end up you know getting these models to review and then i'm like yeah that's really catching my eye and then i go chase down the heavyweight consist <laughs> that it runs with and uh and a note about uh, Tony, I don't, I don't know how he has time to hang out with us because not only HO Collector, but uh, Model Railroad News, I thought he accidentally had showed us a future issues cover where he was open <laughs> for his pictures. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, I actually gave a subscription of HO Collector to my cousin who just oh. loves the history of trains. Uh, so I think he's on like month, I don't know if he's through a year yet or not, but he, uh, he's really enjoying the magazine. But yeah, the models are amazing and uh, it just it's a great time to be a modeler and it just you end up buying stuff that you have that's not in your era just because it catches your eye and it's so beautiful and well done. Broadway Limited does that to me all the time. I'm <laughs> always seeing something that I got absolutely no why would it what would I do with that? I don't know, but I think I need two. Yeah. yeah. Our January, I'm starting work on our January 2023, which is hard to believe, but January 2023 issue will be Go Big in 2023 is the cover, and I've got the Broadway Centipede, the Big Boy, the Blue Goose are all like nosed in on the cover. So big locomotives for the January edition is to give you a tease of what's what's coming. So, yeah. I, I, I I was okay in showing this, right? Oh yeah, that it just came, came out. out. Okay. It, it's it's out. Yeah, it's been out about a week almost. Okay, yeah. I, I just want to make sure I, I I got in the mail, so I <laughs> I, I figured I'd, I'd uh, bring it up tonight. But uh, nice stuff, nice stuff. Yeah, no no offense to the other guys, but uh, Tony probably agrees with me. We could just have material from just Broadway for <laughs> months on end, if not the whole year. So oh, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know, so, we, we make a lot of tools we we do um, yeah the, the amount of products that you just shipped out was incredible ken mm -hmm. oh, thank you thank you 
And uh, ju just to go over things and recap, because um, we, we talked a lot, but um, uh, we, we also have an announcement, I guess, that we'll semi talk about. But uh, Broadway Limited has a ton of pre-orders. And uh, Ken, I didn't see on your sheet uh, any talk about pre-orders, but you, you also had a, a nice uh, nice steam engine announcement, no? Which? Uh, well, let's oh, the, um, the CNO, the hybrid. Yes, yes. Let me see if I could bring it up here. Hang on. Um, James or uh, Tony, if you're able to find it as well. Yeah, I can, uh, I can get you. Hold on just a second here. Go back to the website. And you guys are announcing so much product, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> this is the talking about the CNO Mikado, the K2. Yes. Oh. Yeah, and, and this is new tooling, I believe, or this is a hybrid. Guys, okay. Have you done uh, it before, though, or is this no. is something new? Really? This, this is the first time. That tender uh, is beautiful. And, uh, you know, all, all of our trains really are handmade, um, especially the hybrids. Um, I lost my thought. Um, oh, oh. I, think, I think James, by accident, uh, uh, removed himself, but hopefully he could gain in there but um yeah so so basically the broadway limited k2 mikados just announced and broadway is announcing so much product and uh one easy way to kind of sort uh the product if you go to trainworld.com on our website ho scale you could sort uh by broadway limited the uh the scale if you're looking for steam steam but tons of different uh product on pre-order and we'll uh, break down to, to how many items, but over 140 items on pre-order. And you see GP20s, um, different paint schemes. So uh, tons of product, GP35s, um, which is uh, uh, new for Broadway Limited, uh, GP30s, um, new for Broadway Limited, lots of great stuff. And uh, something that I wanted to uh, quickly uh, go over as well, is on the GP30s, you guys kind of announced, we're also doing the custom run with you guys for uh, a black bonnet paint scheme, which goes with the ES44s um, and the uh, uh, F units as well. And these are were very popular. Um, we're actually pretty close to selling out on all paint schemes. They were a huge success. And um, if you're looking for the Broadway Train World exclusive items, we're doing a, a, a lot of great products with Broadway, actually tw 20 train world exclusives with Broadway. They're a great partner uh, with us. And uh, if you just go to trains, train world exclusives, uh, the scale you're in, and you could drop down by manufacturer Broadway limited. You could see these are the uh, New York city uh, uh, Commodore uh, Vanderbilt Hudson's. You got the Southern Pacific daylight. Um, these are the Florida Gulf and Atlantic's. Um, so tons of product, unique, different, but uh, again, there's, there's so many products that, um, uh, and James is popping back in here. I had an internet flicker and it just <laughs> all went out. No problem. Uh, we're just going over how, how much on pre-order and, uh, new items that Broadway is making SD forties, um, just a, a ton of product and really neat. So James, do you, do you have a lot of this on pre-order? These are the- yeah, I've got, uh, oh man, I've got two of the different, uh, what is it, the 210-2s, the Texas uh, and Pacific. Oh, that TMP, right. yeah, that's a pretty uh, unit, yeah. Yeah, and then, oh man, uh, uh, there's a Vandy on pre-order. I know I'm gonna put a S2 on pre-order. And look at this. This is just gorgeous. I mean, what you guys are doing in Steam is incredible. Really beautiful. Yeah, the Texas and Pacific, people better put in those pre-orders because th that thing is going to fly off the shelves, especially the Southern Excursion version. 
uh, and the American Freedom Train version, I think, uh, are going to be really, really hot sellers. So, and we'll say it's not a, a big run, so no. get your, get your pre-orders in. I've noticed, and I always encourage manufacturers to make the excursion versions of stuff because there's just a whole contingent of modelers that will go after anything that was excursion uh, or anything in museums. You know, they really – uh, we'll go after that stuff. So, and I'm, I'm kind of one of them on the modern day excursion, but then that's kind of actually bled into the eighties all the way back into the eighties for excursion stuff. So, uh, I'm a big uh, believer. And then I've got an FEF, uh, on pre-order. I've got 844 with the Mars light. So, you know, I, I make sure I, uh, I have, I'm insured, for uh, these runs by pre-ordering with train world. Cause I just, you know, like I said, it's fix it and forget it. It shows up at my door and then my wife complains about the. <laughs> and, and this is going to be unique too. It, this is beautiful. That's really neat. I, I just put that together for either December or January's model renews a news item on that. And yeah, Very that cool. turbine in this fantasy Tuscan red, isn't that pretty? It's got those quad smokestacks, doesn't it, Tony? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the top has got the four. Yeah, what an incredible piece. And yeah, again, another really neat looking what if paint scheme. I really like that. Yeah, so so a lot on pre order. And if you're looking for what just came in from Broadway Limited, if you go to New Arrivals HO scale and drop down to Broadway, um, you could see these uh, SD 45s just rolled in. Uh, tons of new product. The E6 is um, really fantastic. Just a beautiful engine. We talked about the Blue Goose. Um, this was actually interesting. We didn't cover it, but uh, this is one of your ES44s, and um, it's really neat. Isn't that cool. neat? It's got the zebra uh, paint striping. Just, just beautiful. And that unit has smoke as well. That's a diesel with smoke output. I didn't get that, and now I'm wondering why I didn't get that. But I'm we're reviewing the gray Union Pacific and the Canadian National in that right. green and yellow scheme will be in Model Railroad News. Cool. And boy, they're they're really pretty. Those are very nicely done what if paints. Now, Ken on the website, remind me, because I have people that ask me, I can't, you know, when something comes out, you fill the pre-orders and then when it but so it'll disappear. Because I was like, I can't find that on Train World's <laughs> website. It's like it'll come back once you fill the yeah, pre orders yes. and then you know it's in stock. Yes. Yeah, so okay. for like a day or two days, we like to process as many uh, pre orders as we can. And then once items, we realize that, okay, we have enough to cover or um, like enough room where we, we don't want to oversell. So uh, we commit to the pre orders first. And then as, you know, we, process all the pre-orders then we remake things active again and they show up as new arrival because they got to get marked and uh dated and you know all that good stuff updated pictures so uh they they do pop up but it's only a day or two that they, they're they're off the website but usually when that happens you know we're processing so many pre-orders i mean these shipments and these numbers from broadway are huge i, I mean any manufacturer that that ships us uh, and the, the distributors that send it to us, the 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 bills be, are so big because the engine prices are so big. And so we're processing it as quick as we can. But um, it, it really is amazing. And and truly, we anyone who pre-orders, we, we take care of them. We get it out right away. Uh, usually we ship the same day the, the shipment comes in um, and, and we get it out as quick as possible. Sometimes it's like the credit card has to be updated, stuff like that. Um, so, but uh, regardless, we, we get them out, but really cool stuff. And the other way you can search by uh, Broadway Limited is uh, by brand Broadway Limited. And uh, we got o over 800 items of Broadway in stock. Wow. Look at that. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. It, I appreciate it. Yep. Yep. It's, uh, it, it's, Broadway is a great line. They make great engines and rolling stocks and uh, pa passenger cars. They, they, they have it all. And uh, we, we do our best to carry every single product and make sure that we have it in your other warehouse to ship it out. So lots of choices. One story that, that that's kind of funny is that over the years, 
I appreciate the work that goes into the retail part of it and Kenny's part of it. It's a lot of work. And, um, you know, they'll always say, we'd hate to be a manufacturer. We don't want to do that. And I'm like, boy, I'd hate to be a retailer. I don't want to do that. That's right. That's so right. It's, a good, it's a good relationship. Yeah, it, it goes hand in hand. But yes, um, yeah. All right. This was nice. We got to do this more often. It's always fun. For sure. For sure. Always fun to talk about the new stuff, especially the steam locomotives from Broadway. Oh, it's always you. exciting. Always exciting. Without a doubt. And uh, James, thank you for coming on tonight and uh, sharing your expertise. And uh, Tony, as always, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your, your knowledge, the, the history, the encyclopedia, I'm going to start calling you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ken, it's always great having you. And I, I want to see more tan next time. Wait, wait. <laughs> What's going on? You're in Florida. This is all the big, all the hurricane cleanup. <laughs> we 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 gotta tell Bob. We gotta start letting you out of the the, the warehouse. And the <laughs> right. And, um, and Kenny, thank you for putting this on and being so gracious to, to you two guys. Also, thank you very much. No problem. It's it's all Fun Tony's to cooked idea. He says you got to get Broadway on. You got to get Broadway on. I'll be work. I'll be working on stuff, and it's like this is good. This is good. Wait a minute. And then I email Ken Junior. Ken, see if we can get so and so on because there's they've got this, 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 and this that we want to talk about. Yeah, that, that's it. Well, guys, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And Broadway Limited has so many items, pre-orders, in stock, new arrivals. And you could get them at trainworld.com. We're carrying all of Broadway's product. Uh, James, Tony, Ken, thank you. It was a pleasure. And thank you, everybody, so much for watching tonight. Have a good one. Take care. Good night.